This is One Sentence News, a daily podcast featuring three news stories with a sentence-long summary and one sentence of context apiece. I'm Colin Wright. This is a sponsored message. Recently, I started using Anchor as my podcast host. Anchor offers benefits that most other hosts do not. It's free to use, but it also has a collection of tools that allow you to create a podcast completely within the Anchor website or smartphone app. They distribute your show to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and all the other distribution channels without any additional effort on your part. And you can make money from your podcast without any minimum audience size. So you can use it as a more traditional podcast host like I do, but it's also got everything you need to start a podcast from scratch in one place. If you're keen to give it a shot, download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. It's Tuesday, April 5th, 2022. Let's talk about the news. From the New York Times, Russia-Ukraine War Summary. Germany is reportedly expelling 40 Russian diplomats. More sanctions are reportedly under development by the EU against Russian interests in the wake of revelations about apparent war crimes committed against civilians by Russian troops. The EU has vowed to reduce their import of natural gas from Russia by two-thirds by the end of 2022, and EU member state Lithuania has announced that they've recently ceased their Russian gas imports entirely. The U.S. Secretary of State has said that although the ruble and Russia's economy are doing okay right now, considering all the sanctions and such that have been leveled against them, there's reason to believe this is not a sustainable posture for the Russian government, as it requires a lot of manipulation and investment to keep things from collapsing. Though on the other hand, revenues from oil and gas exports do seem to be a lot higher in Russia this year than is typical, so there's a chance their current posture could be more sustainable than they initially seem. There's now a debate about whether some of the actions of Russian forces in Ukraine should be considered genocidal rather than mere war crimes, two designations that are not ideal for those to whom they are applied, but also terms that don't have any real legal consequences attached to them, at least not until some kind of international rule of law returns to the region. From Bloomberg, Khan throws Pakistan into chaos with disputed call for election. There's quite a lot of drama in Pakistani politics right now, as Prime Minister Khan, who is facing a no-confidence vote and an almost certain ouster from power, was able to get a political ally to scrap the vote in favor of a fresh election. Khan has been facing this kind of no-confidence move for a while now, and he was able to get a member of his party to cancel the no-confidence motion, citing a group of foreign interests conspiring against Khan as the rationale, and the president then dissolved parliament. The Supreme Court is currently reviewing this sequence of events and have said Khan will remain in office until they sort things out. And from The Verge. A Facebook bug led to increased views of harmful content over six months. According to an internal report, last October, a group of Facebook engineers discovered that the algorithms deciding what gets shown on the news feeds of people using their network were up-ranking instead of down-ranking misinformation-heavy content. In essence, the software that determines what's legit and worth showing and what's not displayed more of the content that was meant to be displayed less, and this was especially true of content that came from entities that were repeat misinformation-spreading offenders. This, in turn, spiked views of factually incorrect content on Facebook by as much as 30% globally for a period of about half a year. If you're finding some value in One Sentence News, consider leaving a quick review wherever you get your podcasts and or sharing the show with a friend. You can find out more about this show or subscribe to the email version at onesentencenews.com and you can support this and other related projects like the Let's Know Things and Brain Lenses podcasts at understandery.com.